Good morning, Morabi Rabotai. We are continuing on Masichet Abu Dazara, and we are on Daf Chaf, Amud Aleph, the bottom of the Amud. Today's Amud is being learned, Lishud Yoshua ben Diana, Yael bat Rivka, Menashe ben Asi. Today's Amud is also being learned, Leilui Nishmat, Tzipora um, bat Yitzchak, also being learned, Leilui Nishmat, Menashe ben Yaakov, and Leilui Nishmat, Sadaf Simcha Bat Fariba Tehila Eden, Avraham Ben Esther, uh, Farzane Diana Bat Victoria, that all the Nishamot should have an Aliyah. Amen. Amen. So we started a very interesting um, Gemara with the story of none other than Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel, the Nasi Israel, who um, saw a beautiful Goyish woman and he said, Ah, he said the bracha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that Hashem has beautiful creatures in the world. So says the Gemara, how did he look at her? Mishari, can you look at a, um, a beautiful woman? The Pasuk says, mikol davara. You should be careful mikol davara. And the Gemara Darshins, and this the Rasha is because of the the pasuk after this that says ki ye ish tame mikre laila. So the Gemara says shelo istakel adam beisha naav afilu pnuya beshet ish va afilu mechoeret. You can't be mistakel be beisha even if, if she, especially if she's an eshet ish, even if she is um, very ugly, still you cannot look at her, can't gaze at her, because that would be an isur av venishmarta mikol davara. Now. The very interesting point over here is, and this is brought by many, I have here in front of me the, the Sefer Yad David, um, but really it's Magen Abraham as well, Magen Abraham in, in Siman Resh Chavtet, earlier on in the Shlut Het. Magen Abraham says, and here he brings it in the name of Yad Malachim Klal Kuf Ein Tet, and in the name of Orchot Chaim, Avudraham Bet Yosef in Siman Resh Chavtet, and many others. That histaklut, there's a difference between histaklut and re'iyah. Histaklut means when you be kavana, gaze at something, that is considered histaklut. Re'iyah means merely seeing something. And merely seeing something is not necessarily the same thing as histaklut. So says the um, Yad David, same question is asked by Maran Chida as well, based on the Magen Abraham. He says, wait a second. So what's the kasha of the Gemara? Maybe Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel just saw her. The Isur is when you do the Kavana, you look. I actually once said, it's interesting to note in the Torah, it says, If me and you would be writing it, how would we write it? You see something and then, Enayim Ro'od, Alev Hoshik, right? It's a, the, the order, the chronological order of things is you first see, then you want. So why does it say Lo taturu Because sometimes you, a corner of your eye, you see something, and then you pass, and then it registers in your mind, and then you now be kavana look. That is the isur, isur of istaklut. Maybe that's the problem. So. Each one of them answers it in a different way. Here, the David answers perhaps that it is um, it is muhach from the language of the Gemara that they they were meshabeach hakadosh baruch hu that it was something more than just a riyah. It was a The Chafetz Chaim in Biur Alacha seems to answer that when it comes to arayot, arayot is much more chamur than all the other concepts that you have over there in Hilchot Brachot. That you see something, you have to look at it. It's taklut. By arayot, the isur is even riyab alma is asur. You don't have to gaze at it to be asur. But even a riyab by itself will be, become a problem. In other words, the raya that Magra Ram, for instance, brings is, is asur to look at a rasha. The istakil bifne rasha. So then you saw somebody that's a rasha, fine. But to, to start to gaze at them, that makes an impact on a person. That's the Isur of Istakrut. But says the Chafetz Chaim, when it comes to the Isur of Arayot, 
that's a much bigger problem. It's a much more profound isur. So even a riya by itself, it could be a problem. I want to just share a, a connected uh, topic to this is something we find in Masechet Baba Batra, Dafnun Zayin. The Gemara there says, if you have nashim ha'omdot ala kvisa, you have a path, you want to go to shul, you want to go to whatever it is that you want to go to do, and there's a way that passes by the river, and back in the day, they didn't have washer and dryer. People had to schlep their, their, their laundry to the, to the river, and they would um, stay in the bed of the river in, where it was not so deep. They had to roll up their sleeve, the sleeve of their, uh, their, their, their skirt, basically, and a little bit of the area of the shok would, would, would show. Shok is the area between the ankles and the knee, of course, not... not uh, unlike what people may think, and it's even written in some of the serious svarim, that the shok is from knee and up. You see from over 25 rishonim and hundreds of achronim, that is, shok is from knee below to the ankle. And the Gemara says, if the nashima of Dodal Kivisar are there, and you pass by that path, nikra rasha, a person is called rasha, now the Rashbam over there writes, this is because Masechet, Masechet Baba Batra, only until the Daf Gimel has Rashi, afterwards he becomes Rashbam, the grandson of Rashi. So Rashbam there writes, even if he didn't see anything, he closed his eyes like this and he, went, went, he didn't see nothing, still called the Rasha. Why? Because how dare you put yourself in a situation of Nisayon that you're going to maybe come to see something that's Pritzut. And then the Mara says, that's only harini. It's only if you have another way to go. If there's no other way and you need to go, so then don't look and go. Then you're not called the Rasha if you didn't look, if you didn't see. Right? That's how the Rashbam understands. The Mara Rambam perhaps maybe learns it a little bit differently that um, seems from the Rambam that if you didn't see, you're not called the Rasha. But this is what the Rashbam says on the daf of the Gemara in Masih Babat. Now, the problem is the following. The um, Gemara that we're going to have later on in the Memchet over here talks about, in Sachim, talks about the path of Abu Dazara. Can you pass through a path of Abu Dazara when there is Reach of Abu Dazara? There is uh, actually. Then the Gemara also says if you have Ikadar Kacharina, if you have a different path and you choose this one, Nikra Rasha, bad. The Tosafot there say, that's only if the two paths, the, the, the two ways that you have, the two, two pathways are equal. But if the other alternative path is much longer, then that's, you know, called the Rasha, you're going to go the shortcut, amazing, right? Asks the Chafetz Chaim, says the Chafetz Chaim, why doesn't the Tosafot in Baba Batra say the same thing? There, nobody says that the path have to be equal. It seems, when you learn the Gemara there, that as long as you have a different way, you have to choose that way, otherwise Chasr Shalom Nikra Rasha. Why? So says the Chafetz Chaim, there are, there are others who say they equate the Gemarot and the Tosafot, but Chafetz Chaim says, no. It's Badavka. The Tosafot there by Abu Dazara only applies to Abu Dazara. But when it comes to Arayot, Arayot is much more Chamur. Because Gezel Varayot, Nafsho Shil Adam, Hamadatan, Umit Avalahe, and the Gemara says, this is something that we are naturally um, have a tendency towards it, and therefore you have to be more careful. The more of natural tendency there is, the more a person has to be careful, and therefore you can't, you can't even go there, even if you have the alternative way that is longer path. So here, very much to, in that, in that, um, in that spirit, says the Chafetz Chaim in, um, in Biur HaLacha, that you have to be careful even from Reya, not just the Istaklut. Fine. So says the Gemara. That's a very good question. In other words, Zaz is asking a, a million dollar question. How is it mutar for a person to test himself, right? When it comes to when it comes to the Gemara earlier on that we had that they had two pathways in front of them, one of them from Avodah Zarah, one of them from Arayot, 
and bet zonot, and they actually, there are, there are actually a number of acharonim who ask this question from Masech Batra to Avodah Zara Yud Zayin, and they, there are multiple different answers given, one of which is based on um, a, a Gemara and a Ritba um, that, that applies the Gemara to, to other uh, scenarios as well. For instance, the Gemara says that Rav Ada Barava would put a Kala on his shoulders, the Gemara in Dav Zayin, too good, he would put a, a, a Kala on his shoulders and it would dance at the, at the wedding, right? So how is that Mutar to do? The Gemara asks that question. The Gemara says, yeah, if it's considered like a Kaki Chivri or like a Kashura, it's, um, it, it's like a log, it's like a piece of wood. Uh, for a person, it, it depends on every person. And person, on the other hand, you have something very um, to the opposite end, which is also passed by Rambam. It's a Gemara in Masechet Kiddushin, Daf Pe'alef. There the Gemara brings this story between um, Rav and Rabbi Yehudai's student. They're going on a path outside the city, and they encounter a woman that's going in front of them. And he says, Dal That's really a sugya of Yehud, a little bit slightly different sugya there. And Rav tells his student, Rav Yehuda, he says, uh, lift your foot from, from in front of Geinam, let's go quickly and pass her by. Because, you know, going after a woman, achare ari velo achare isha, says the Gemara, right? And this is like a potential gain. You have to go quickly and avoid that thing. Now, Rav Yehuda tells Rav, his Rebbe, he says, oh, well, you taught us before that anashim kisherim is mutar. When you have two kosher people, that would be mutar. Yisur of Yehud doesn't apply. And Rav turns to his student. Rav is, is the, uh, the, the one that's famous for asara mili de chasidut of the Rav. He was tremendous chasid. Rav, for instance, never looked beyond his, his four amod. It's a tremendous thing. You know, he had many, many chumrot, it uh, was a chassid. Uh, yet, he says to Rabbi Yehuda, he says, that's not said about me and you. That's not about, about people. The Gemara, Yudzai, Yudched, in Kiddushin earlier on, has stories of tremendous chassidim that did um, unbelievable nisyonot they, they withstood. So Rav says, that's talking about them, not us. Now, many do not take that Gemara seriously. Uh, they say, no, Rav was just machmir for himself, but really a regular kosher person is considered a kosher person, right? A regular shomer to Rav, mitzvot is considered kasher. And Rema Paskins in Shukharuch, Ebena Eze, Siman Chavarev, like that. Rambam, however, who the Shukharuch Paskins like, takes this Gemara very seriously, and he says, two regular kosher people are nisht ken kosher, are not considered kasher, um, nowadays, you have to have Hasidim, Leonim, um, and therefore, according to Svaradim, who follow the Shukhan Ruch and the Rambam, um, a regular two from people in a scenario of Yehud would be Asur, right? With, with a woman. But again, nevertheless, these, these are the Gemarot that are contrasted by the Poskim, by the Achronim. But our Gemara, for our purposes, it says that. Um, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel did it, and the Gemara now asks, it says, well, it says, when Ishmarta Mikol Davara, you can't do that. Shelo istakel adam beisha. And even if she is mecho'eret, velo bebik deseva, not only that, but you can't even look at uh, beautiful garments, colorful, beautiful garments, shel isha, velo bechamor, and not only that, there are levels of tzniut to avoid any hirhur, any negative thought, which is not even limited to human beings. Velo bechamor, velo bechamora. But anyway, that says that this is, this is because chamor uh, uh, and also chazir, the two examples over here, they are not very tzanua. They are considered very pritzut in the animals, chamor in the behemot and uh, chazir in hayot, that they publicly um, do their needs in this area. So it says, When they are involved in Tashmish. And even if a person has a very challenging, it's very challenging for him to keep his eyes. Is, uh, some people are like ADHD, DDD, uh, they, they're always looking around, you know, and it's hard for them to focus on one thing. Or, 
the Ben Yishchai Ben Yehuda writes, even if all over you are nashim, right? You're in a surrounding area of, of, of a lot of women. So everywhere you turn is like you have a naim. Like, you know, you can't turn away from it because all around you is pritzut. So it says, the Gemara, you still have to control yourself. You have to be very mindful because this is something that is mutal alecha. This is something that um, a person is obligated to be careful and hence no excuses. So it says... <coughs> Um, says the Gemara. Amru Alav, once we spoke about Malay Naim, we speak about the Malach Hamavid as well here, once we're at it. Amru Alav al Malach Hamavid, Shekulo Malay Naim. Malach Hamavid is full of eyes, right? Now, many Mefarshim say it's not, of course, literal translation, it's full of eyes, a Malach, right? What he means is, Malach HaMavit sees everything, records everything, right? Like the Mara says in, in, in Masech Baba Batra, the Mara says that, Hu HaSatan, Hu HaYetzer HaRa, Hu, except the other one, Hu HaYetzer HaRa, Hu HaSatan, Hu Malach HaMavit. It's the same Malach, we call, it has three different jobs, and the names are defining the jobs, right? So Yetzer HaRa is in the capacity of tricking a person to do, an avera. Once he gets you to do an avera, he, tur- he turns his other head and he becomes a prosecuting angel, becomes a satan, right? Lastin. And once he gets the, the psak din, then he carries it out as well uh, with, with a big smile. And he has his sword there, like the Mara says, in the Malay Naim Beshat Psiratosh El Chole. This is all, all beyond uh, um, the scope of, of, uh, of a regular shiur and some of it um, over our head, um, the deeper understanding of, of the Malachim and Malach HaMavid over here, that the Gemara says, he has his sword with him, the Shat Petirato Shel Chole, he stands on top of the, the, the head of a sick person, Harbosh Lufa he has his sword stretched out, the Tipa Shel Marat Ruyabo, has a Tipa of whatever you want to call Marat, poison, um, that is hanging from it. Kevan shechole roe oto. It's uh, the permission is given to the sick person to see it for a moment. And mizdazea poteach piv vezorkale toch piv. That this is the mara that is thrown into his mouth. Mimena met from it it dies. Mimena uh, masriach the the body uh, becomes rotten and decomposes from it as well. Panav murikot. Um, and, and that's the cause of the change of color in a dead person as well. That's what the Gemara says about Malach HaMavit. Now, this was the conclusion of the, the question of the Gemara, right? We got very carried away with Malach HaMavit and all the eyes and, and, and so on. But really, the, the Gemara just finished asking a question. What's the question of the Gemara? How in the world was it mutar for Ramon Shem Gamliel to look at this woman? Right? Or maybe even for Rabbi Akiva. It's not so simple if Rabbi Akiva is part of the question. But certainly, Rabbi Shem Gamliel, he made a bracha on her. Uh, how is it mutar to do that? And nowadays we don't make this brachot because you know, different reasons brought. The Hafez Chaim again says in, in Shah Rasiyun, in, in Bir al he, he writes that the reason is because it has to be naibi He has to be really, really gorgeous, beautiful. And who is there to say that I could be the judge? Right? So therefore, uh, we don't assume that people are very beautiful necessarily nowadays, and that's it. So the Gemara's question is, how in the world did Rabban Shem look at this woman? And the Gemara says, Keren Zavit Havai. Right? Instead of the Gemara answering that this was just the Yab Alma and so on, we already spoke about that, why that's not considered an answer, both according to the Chida, Maran Chida, and according to the Chafetz Chaim, but the Gemara's answer is, it was a Karen Zavit. That when you come from one, you, know, you meet each other at the corner, sometimes you bump into somebody that you, uh, you would want to avoid and go to the other side of the street. But then you have it, because you're coming from this side, they're coming from that side, you're blindsided, and, um, and you see the person that you didn't want to see, Erev Yom Kippur, you say, Mechila, like, yeah, right? So Erev Yom Kippur, Gemara is. So that's the, the, the answer of the Gemara. So says the Gemara now, one more piece. We said that you cannot look at 
the garments of a woman. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Rav Yehuda said in the name of his Rabbi Shmuel, Afilu shtuchin al gabe kotel. Even if she's not wearing them, they are just hanging to dry, still will be asur, given that you know whose they are, right? This way, the mind of a person can imagine things that he is used to imagining. Um, so you, you're used to people wearing clothing. You're used to... Um, you know, seeing clothing, so you could put it, the imagination of a per- person could put the two together, basically. So if you know the owners of this beautiful garment, the chashash is, we are concerned, that now you're going to say, ah, this is this woman's. And then your mind is going to imagine that, you know, that she's wearing the, woman, the, the, the garment, and that's some, something that's not sanua. So therefore, you don't, you, don't, you don't look at, you don't gaze at the big death svuim shel isha. Says the Gemara, Amar papa ube makir ba'alehin. We're talking about a case that you know who the owners are, because otherwise, just a regular uh, beautiful garment is not as to look at. Amar rava, taikonami de katani, velo be big seva, that it says uh, it has to be big deseva over here the, on the side. They, they change the girsa a little bit of shel isha. So big deseva shel isha means not just big deseva nice garments, but nice garments of a woman that you know. Velo katani velo be big desvuin shmamina. Okay, says the Gemara. Amar Rav Chista, hani mili beatiki, aval bechadeti let lamba. This is only things that you have used before. They're not brand new. But mechadati let lamba. If they're new, we don't, we're not concerned. Why? The ilote mahachi. If you don't say this. Anan mana le'ashpuri hechi abinan. How do we give our new garments to um, the koves, the, the launder, launderman? Back then, they, they, not everyone did their own laundry. They would give it to a person that was a professional laundryman. So how do you give it to, to him? For him, it would be Asur to look at it because he knows who the owner is, right? Hakami Stakil is going to look at it, and that would be Asur. So says the Gemara, Utamech Hadama Rav Yehuda. He says, that's not the Kasha, because according to you, what Rav Yehuda said, mean mutar mechol How come stakil? What is he talking about? That when you have animals, you know, part of having a flock uh, or being in, in a business of having animals is that you have to have a controlled system for them to mate. And sometimes it's, it's not going to happen by itself or it's not going to happen as much in, in a natural um, setting un- unless you have a controlled setting. So part of that is with the 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 Gemara that we are learning right now, um, that you could actually physically make them mate together. So that of course you're looking, right? So says the Gemara, why is that mutar? We just learned that you can't watch animals when they're mating. So how is this mutar? Says the Gemara, the reason is Hakamistakir Ela be aviditarit is a heter that he is busy with his business, he is busy with his job, and his mind is not wandering in a negative element because he has to do his job and he has to do it properly, and that's about it. So says the Mara, Hachanami Bavit Here also, when he's washing clothing, he's not thinking of uh, how beautiful the, the, the garment looks like. He's thinking of the pile of, of clothing that he hasn't done and the watch that says he has only two hours left and he has to, to finish up his job. And when he's busy with his job, he's not tarud be machshevet avera. That's correct. There, there are, yes, there are, there are um, different leniencies for people who are busy doing what they're doing as, as a job, but it's not necessarily, it's not a blanket header for everything. It's not a blanket header for everything. Of course, there are questions about, you know, photographers, barbers, doctors, um, you know, and it gets to more sensitive when you talk about chiropractors and, 
and, and massage professionals and so on. These are not necessarily, each one of these is a question and not every scenario that's mutar necessarily means you should be doing it, right? When it, when it comes to this area of yichud and inyane arayot, there are many scenarios that halachically speaking, you have all the suffix fikas and all the kulas, but it's not a scenario that the Ben Torah should be putting himself into. Um, so that's something that a person should have a, a rav, a ser harav, Mr. Lekbina Safik. A person should have a, a Rav that knows these sugyas, knows the Alachot, and discuss it with them. And sometimes it depends on the person himself as well. You have a person that is very prone um, to, to um, th- negative thoughts or someone that has had a past and, and he's very concerned about relapses and so on. So, he, of course, it will be very different um, even if you have the heterim, so to speak than a person that, that is, um, does not have that type of background or um, personal makeup. So says the Gemara, well, we, we will end here, Bezat Hashem. We'll continue this in the days to come. Hazak <laughs>